As a recovering spender myself, I still get anxiety when walking into clothing stores. But what I realize is that I really have to weigh what buying that item is to my value system. So for example, this dress, beautiful, but every time I think about purchasing an item, I have to weigh it with my value system. And if it makes my value system get lower in the priority list, then I have to say no to the item. I'm Lauren, the frugal living expert and author of the book, The Recovering Spender. For years, I was out of control with my spending and obsessed with living the American dream. That was until I took a hard look at my values, changed my lifestyle, and won my life back. Today, I help women live the simpler, happier life they've always dreamed of. Recovering spenders just like me. Oh, I really like this. Michael Kors. Yeah. Okay. I really like that. Okay, so now we're looking, I mean, the, the bags are a weak point for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we saw them under your bed. So let's talk about that anxiety for a minute, because I know being in a store like this gives me anxiety mm -hmm. still, and it's one of my boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, if I come into a place like this, I have to give myself a very strict budget and be searching for a specific thing. So tell me about that. Like, what kind of anxiety is brought up in you? For me, I immediately start to go, as soon as I see the price, how can I adjust my budget mm -hmm. so that I could have that? Okay, and this not, is like a good step in facing a fear. It is, it know? is. And I think that's key for me, too, is not using my debit card mm -hmm. because I would be able to justify how I could take a little bit of money here or here. Right to make it work, when if I really didn't have that money in hand, mm -hmm. I couldn't make it work, because mm -hmm. it's Even leave gone. your wallet at home if you need to. Yeah. And just bring yeah. $10 cash with you, and then that's it. Yeah. That's all you have to spend. Um, I think that'll help you out a lot. Yeah, I do too. So after talking about that, do we need the pink bag? No, we don't need the pink bag. Yes, we don't need the pink bag. I know. So now that we've talked about shopping at, you know, for clothing, Let's talk about shopping for food. So I'm gonna take you to my favorite grocery store, Aldi, and I'm gonna show you how we can save 50% off your grocery bill, and that's gonna put more money back in your pocket so you can start paying down that debt faster. Love it, okay. grass-fed beef. I don't know if you get this, but yeah. this is like half price of what you would pay at a, you know, health food store. So remember that when we're talking about meal planning, I know looking at your bills, there were a lot of little trips throughout the week, right? So now we need to focus on looking for the entire week and planning it out before it happens. So no more little trips. You do one trip a week, you plan out what your week is going to look like, and you shop one time. Okay. Because I mean, you know when you go in to get yeah. one thing, you don't ever come out with one thing, right? right. So you're going to shop one time, and by because you both work full-time, it's really important that you go someplace where you can get in and out and still see the savings. Yeah. So you can come in here, shop for the entire week, spend about a half an hour, save 50%, yeah. and then go home and then not have to come back to the store and spend the money that you don't have. It's crazy that these strawberries are $1.29. So what we're gonna do is pick up the produce for the meal plan okay. and then assemble it later on today to save you the money. Tortilla chips, cheddar cheese, we need cheddar cheese, we need one thing of cheddar cheese, one thing of sour cream. So wow, $60.48 is what we just did for, for five meals. So that's half of what you have been spending on food, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and that's what I love about Aldi so much is that you can save a lot of time and you don't have to sacrifice the quality of the food, even though you're saving a lot of money. Yeah. 
Eating out may be killing your budget, but it's only a symptom of a life that is unplanned. With simple meal planning and strategic grocery shopping, you can easily save hundreds of dollars per month. After you set your budget, you need to realize that you don't just stop there. You need to get really strategic with the way that you are saving money and spending money. Because if you want to be free from that debt, you have to get really intentional. Okay, so now recap where we're at. We have the money in the emergency savings account. So you yep. you did week month one, yeah. we did stick to the budget, yep. right? Successful, so Successful. good job. Yeah. Uh, month two, stick to the budget and put $500 in an emergency savings account. Yeah. Did it. Done. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> good job. Okay, so now we're in our third and final meeting. And now we're gonna talk about maintenance. What happens from here on out? Obviously, this is something that it's not just a one-time thing. This is a constant thing that you're gonna have to be on top of, but you have the tools in your toolbox now to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, the next thing is we wanna start, you know, keeping the budget. I want you to try and get another 500 in savings this month to get you up to that thousand. And then we want to start strategically paying down debt. So um, what bills did you get rid of? You got rid of the direct TV, mm -hmm. right? Um, you negotiated cable prices. What else yes. did you get down? Yeah. Um, I House. canceled my cleaning lady. Cleaning ladies. I know. That's so <laughs> hard. You yeah. sold one of your coolers. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. huge. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that $300 that you've just freed up, you're now going to add that to your credit card bill. Any extra money you get for tax returns, um, we're not going to reward ourselves and go to the Bahamas on vacation, okay? <laughs> you're gonna take that money and you're gonna, everything you get now goes to that credit card balance. Everything you've got, you know, you've got to really focus on that. Now, if you did have um, a few different credit cards, there's a kind of different range of thought with this that you can either pay down the lowest balance first or the highest interest rate first. With the eBay, I mean, I highly think that you can get this credit card paid off in the next year. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I in a so year, too. you can go from debt and yeah. stress to the Bahamas. To the Bahamas. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Only if you save and pay for it with cash can you go to the Bahamas. And you have to pack me in your suitcase. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Deal. Yeah, deal. Yes. Um, no, but I think, I think you guys are doing great. I, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts for the future now? Are they different than they were three months ago? One thing I've learned over these past few months is that, you know, we can cut back on certain things that we've been doing and we're still enjoying ourselves, mm -hmm. still seeing our friends and hanging out at the pool and with family and, and you know, so uh, it's, it's worked out really good. And that was a big Very fear of yours thing. when we yeah. first started Very that yeah. you felt like you would lose friendships or you wouldn't be able to have fun. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so there's still a way to do this, but yet enjoy your life. Yeah. yeah. I was even telling you, Bridget, earlier that you're, you're outlook is so much yeah. brighter. Um, I think for me, it's just a, a sense of peace, just knowing that neither one of us now can point blame at each other. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of our biggest problems. Either one of us wouldn't deal with it, so it was easier to point the finger at, either, you know, at the other person, and you just didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You just felt that guilt of spending or pointing fingers. I have a little tip for you. How you want to talk about money more than she wants to talk about money. So this is what Mark and I do because it's the same way in my family. Mark is always like, let's bring out the spreadsheets. And I'm like, no, I don't want to bring out the spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> that we do, um, we call it our five minute money checkup. So every morning we just have a quick five minute, what are you doing, what are you doing, what's going on with the money, here it is, blah, 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 done. Yeah. Um, and then you know what's going on, you know what's going on, yeah. and we don't have to have like a big budget meeting every, right. every night. And then um, the last thing is to always remember to stay within your fence. Yep. Yeah. Stay within your fence. You're going to hear that for the rest of your life. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just really thankful for you guys and all your hard work. And I'm proud of you. Oh, like, you did it. Yep. We did it. We did we it. Did it. Yep. Yep. Great. In a year from now, when we video ourselves and yes. send it to you and say, you know, we're debt free. Your spending is a reflection of your values. And until you know your values, you will continue to spend money opposite of the things that you hold dearest to you. I had to learn this you know, years ago. It wasn't that I just had to stop spending money, I just had to learn how to spend money on the right things in the right way. 
So welcome to this side of recovery. This is where you can live a happy, fulfilled, debt-free life. It is much better on this side of the fence.